Welcome back, everybody. New podcast coming off of a little bit of a break. Ben and I were uh, venturing through the North Woods, the wilds of northern Michigan. Uh, we took a few days last week. When did we leave? Thursday? Mm-hmm. We left real early, early on Thursday morning. I think we did record a podcast, but did you get it live before we left? Yeah. So um, we, we were off for a couple days uh, out of town and really nice, had a really good time. Talk about more about that probably later, but um, back again in in one of the hard parts about taking off is you come back and you you know you you feel you, you always it seems like we're always feeling behind. Uh, I think everybody. I'm not just saying us. And so one of the things that's hard about going away for a little while is coming back because you just you kind of bury yourself even deeper. So for all those that have messages, I did about 25 Facebook responses last night like dm'd messages about dogs i'm just about caught up but what happens is is as soon as you start sending messages back then you get reply messages back with more information and which is what i asked for and so it's a it's a little vicious cycle there but um playing catch up on that instagram same thing i I did not get to, to all of them and i've got several to get to um emails as well so i appreciate you if you're uh, if you're listening to this and you're going man i don't know when he ever responds uh i will it's just going to take a little bit of time but we wanted to get a podcast done we are digging what is today wednesday feels like monday it's already wednesday now we got a holiday weekend coming up so I, if you sense it in my voice a little bit it's because it probably is there i'm a little bit over i feel a little bit overwhelmed with all the stuff we've got going um, ben and I just ch- chased down a, a project that that is um, I don't know it's kind of time sensitive. It's for North American Whitetail. We were working on p- pumping that out this week, um, so we got that done. That's a big weight off my shoulders. But then it's just you know now it's onto the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So we wanted to do a podcast um, partially because I am sensing with a lot of the messages that I got back a lot of panic actually um, more recently. And and it feels like, I don't know if it's because, maybe it's partially because of my state of mind and how I'm processing things right now um, from a pace standpoint, but also because I do think some other people are feeling some pressures and stresses. So uh, we're going to touch on that a little bit. It's just the tip of the iceberg because there's a bunch of them. There's a few of them that I'm I'm just read recently here, and I'm racking my brain to go, okay, what do I got to do here to help this this person? Uh, And so we're going to be doing different things. Now... I just did a post. Um, We got some pictures back from our workshop and some great ones. My wife took, I don't know, 1,300 pictures or something and we put them on some drive and finally got through them and were able to share them with those um, who who joined us for the workshop. And I got to look at a, a couple of them. I didn't look at very many of them. But I stole one of my old buddy Wyatt Anderson and I made a post on our Instagram story and I turned it into a regular post on our on our um, Instagram as well. And it probably went to Facebook because I believe they are linked. So it said something about 4th of July. Don't use this weekend as a cheap way of introducing your dog to gunfire. And I did it kind of jokingly. I wasn't joking that much. I think 4th of July is a holiday that creates more issues. And we talked, I think we did a podcast on this in the past, probably about this time last year. And we're going to do another one because the content will be a little bit different. Oh, my wife's calling. Uh, the content is going to be a little bit different based on what we're what we're dealing with and, and some of the stories that are going on right now but in my life but 4th of July creates more gun shy dogs than 12 gauge shotguns i think everybody thinks that you know shooting over the dog is how we get dogs to become gun shy first off i don't believe gun shy is a pre-existing condition it's not something that dogs genetically inherit i think some dogs are more sensitive to stuff and i think they are maybe more prone but i think if you, it's completely dependent on how you introduce loud noises to your dog and if you introduce them improperly you are going to create issues that you're going to deal with going forward uh, and, and as a hunter, obviously the gun fire is part of the game and it needs to be introduced properly. And the timing of that, I do not think is specific. I introduced Bella to gunfire when she's probably 10 months at least. It was, it wasn't that long ago. It wasn't long ago. I mean, she's already almost a year. Well, I have to look at it. She's about, she's not quite a year and a half, but she's probably, uh, f- pushing 15 months right now, 14 or 15 months. And so I would say it was probably about four months ago, maybe four or five months ago. So probably I don't, I'd have to look back on, you look in the Bella Be Good series on YouTube and the playlist, you will see Gunfire is part of the title of it. So 
We introduced her. She was not a young puppy. I didn't have to do it, but I had to be sure not to get her in a position to have a problem with loud noises or gunfire leading up to it. And really, that's when we first introduced her to a cap gun. I introduced her some, to some loud noises, some banging, some clapping of hands, some things that got her accustomed to that noise prior to ever even using a cap gun. So we, I emphasize the importance of this and because 4th of July, we forget about stuff like that. And we get into the idea, there are tons and tons of noises, loud noises, lighting of fireworks that happen. And when they happen unexpectedly or when they happen without thinking ahead, you're going to create a lot of issues for dogs that are not used to them. Even some of my dogs, like, like Spry, Spry does not like loud bangs. She loves gunfire. Gunfire to her is not an issue. It's always associated with something positive. She hates thunderstorms. She hates fireworks. She hates distant booms that have nothing to do with her. So she is a bit on the sensitive side when it comes to stuff like that, but not in the wrong situations. So that's an important thing that we are able to deal with. Now, I, fireworks for her will create a lot of anxiety and she'll get in a lot of she'll be very uncomfortable. So I'll make sure to set her up for success. Now, Bella last year for the 4th of July, a year ago, she was, well, this would give me, I just had gotten her not long before. So she was probably about three months old. I'm guessing last year she was about three months old, which put her at 15 months. So she was about three months old last year, obviously not introduced to the gunfire. And we went to a party that had a big fireworks show. Well, it was a buddy of mine who's a dog trainer with us and Todd from our trainer's team. And so he has this giant 4th of July bash. Actually, it wasn't 4th of July, but it was a little, it was in July. Mm -hmm. But it's close to it, and he does this big fireworks show. And so I was very careful to say, okay, Todd, I've got Bella with, and we need to make sure that Bella doesn't have a negative situation with these fireworks. I knew it was going to get loud, and I've been there before, and I know it gets it gets to be a lot. So... I mean, people were wearing earmuffs. I mean, that's how many fireworks are going off. So I said to Todd, you know, what can we do? And he said, oh, I know exactly what we'll do. I've got a spot. We would take her down in the basement. We took the pup. We took a kennel. We carried it down into his basement, which is a finished basement, insulated walls, um, sound, you know, very protected. It's in his basement of his house. The fireworks are going out of a pole barn that's, you know, 50 yards from his house. So they're still pretty loud, but, you know, could we have gotten away with that? Yeah, probably. But what did we decide to do? We decided to put reggae music on, and we turned Bob Marley on. While the and we turned the stereo up in the bar that he has down there, and we tucked her into a kennel. Now we didn't blast the music, but we turned it up pretty loud so that there was no way you were hearing the booms and bangs over Bob Marley. And so I went down there. My dog was high. No, I'm just kidding. She she, she wasn't. But. I went down there afterwards, took the puppy out of the kennel, and everything was good. So we made a real conscious effort in understanding that we are going to experience some real loud noises. And how are we going to set her up to get through it positively? I think you 100% have to be thinking along those lines this 4th of July. And it's not just on the 4th of July, because everybody knows, when is the 4th? Saturday? Everyone knows that Thursday night, everyone's taking Friday off. So Thursday night, the beers are going to flow. There's fireworks going to happen on Thursday night. Friday night, it's going to happen again. Saturday night, it's going to happen again. Some might do it on Sunday night. So you're going to have these fireworks, and you're going to have to deal with them. So deal with them the, prop, the proper way. And I am not saying, and I am saying don't use it as an introduction to these noises because you just don't have the control. We always talk about controlling the scenarios, the setups, the situations, the environment around our dog to ensure success and avoid failure. This is one of those ones you're going to have to make an effort. And so some people are going to go, oh, man, I got you mean I got to do that? Yeah, you do. And it comes with the responsibility of having the dog. Or you deal with the idea of, man, I've got a gun-shy dog. And don't blame it on the breeder and don't blame it on anything else because i know i hear all that oh my dog's born gun shy no it wasn't and i'm not saying you do it intentionally because i've had dogs that that we broke down the situation we tried to figure out well where did this gun shyness come from well here the person built a house put the puppy in the garage and the nail and the nail guns on the roof putting the roof on created a hell of a lot of noise and this little puppy ever since then was scared of guns well it didn't have anything to do with guns. It had to do with the scenario or situation that you put them in. So we need to be careful of that going in. Now, so 
I've got a puppy that we're training, Cedar. Um, Golden Retriever. We got a new little series that's kind of developed. We didn't plan on doing it. Did we do any podcasts on Cedar yet? Mm -hmm. So I don't think we've even talked about Cedar on a podcast. Cedar is a little Golden Retriever that belongs to my parents. Um, They are having a hard time with her. Uh, She's full of energy. She comes from a field trial kennel out of Minnesota that definitely bred dogs for American field trials. And they're real nice. But it's definitely not what my parents are doing with that dog. They want a little family dog that's quiet and lays by their feet and watches TV. And so they're struggling. Uh, they've, they've got some habits that have been formed. They've got some good ones and they've got some not so good ones. And so we brought her in. She's a little bit more than my parents can handle. And right now we are working with her. Now she is back home because during our trout fishing trip, she went back to my parents' house. We'll be picking her up later this week. But I think we've got seven or eight videos filmed since we brought cedar back and i would say there was some progress made and there was also some things that showed up that are very clear um, not overnight fixes it's just going to take time to reverse some of the habits it's going to take time to form some of the desirable behaviors that we're looking for so it's kind of an interesting series Um, i've gotten a lot of real positive feedback on it and what i wanted to talk about it today so if you're interested in it uh, it's only on instagram right now we will be playing someone asked me when are you going to put this on youtube Eventually we're going to, but the projects list is long for Ben right now. And so prioritizing them to get that one to YouTube will fall, will happen, but it's just going to be a little while. So if you're on Instagram or you, you're not on Instagram, my dad got an Instagram account. And my dad doesn't have any social media stuff. I don't know that he knows what Instagram is. But my sister set it up so that he could watch the training videos. And I think he's getting a lot of enjoyment out of it. But it's it's interesting to him. But anyway... If you're not a social media person, let me tell you, my dad has an Instagram account and you can too. You don't have to use it. If all you want to do is watch this series, form the account, follow us, and then you can, then you can watch it and you don't have to deal with anything else on it. But so, and I know that there are people like that because we get these people to follow us that have no posts. They have no follow. um, No, they don't follow anybody else. Um, they don't have any followers, and I don't think they're hackers. I, don't, I think they're just people that set up an account like my dad, who's old, older. I'm not going to say he's old, but he's older and not a social media guy. But it's a way for him to get content and information. So if you're interested, Cedar. Uh, I think we're going to call it the golden opportunity because it's, it's, that's what we've been calling these videos. But anyway, a lot of people have asked me about this what are you doing with these dogs? What are you doing with her the rest of the day? I love these videos. I'm seeing the issues. I'm seeing the struggles. But I need you to share with me the rest of your schedule. How many times a day do you work with them? How many times a day do you take them outside? How long are your sessions when you're not videoing? How, and, and I want people to realize that you have to understand I live a normal life. I don't just train dogs. And I think what people think is, All I do is scheduled with 15-minute interval sessions with dogs every day. It doesn't happen. I, our the 99% of our business is not dog related. Not dog related as far as training, directly training dogs. No, it's products and it's creating this content stuff and it's our deer line of Hodeg, our Hodeg brand. It's all these other things and then. Add that into our family. We've, we've got a family just like you guys. We've got little kids. We've got busy lives. We've got wives that have careers. We've got daycares. We've got summer schools. We've got all this other stuff going on as well. So the, the idea of people asking for the schedule that I follow, because I had one person say, you know, I just don't understand how, you, how I'm supposed to be able to do this and not have this run my entire life. I don't have the luxury of have being a dog trainer like you. And they said, you know, we, how do you, how am I supposed to do this and still maintain normal life? I've got kids, blah, 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 blah. And I'm, I responded back to that person and there's several other people that have asked this question. So I, this is why we're doing a podcast episode with it. I live a normal life. I don't schedule life around training my dogs. Instead, I work training the dogs into my normal life. And if you want to know what a regular day looks like, I can't give you a routine because I don't have one that matches every single day. Every day is different. And, but the general understanding is, you know what? The sun comes up and the sun goes down and I've got opportunities in between here and there to get some things done positively with the dog. Maybe more importantly, I have opportunities to ensure things don't go horseshit. 
I think that's the issue that people are having is they're wrecking, they're going, oh, I can't put the dog in the kennel. I can't ask that dog to be on place all day. Ben, I want you to go film Bella right now. This is going to be for the vlog people that are going to watch this on YouTube. I've got four dogs. Now, Cedar's gone. If Cedar were here, Cedar would be doing the exact same thing. But I've got, he's going to shoot a quick video here. And my house right now, and my, my clothes washer broke down. So I've got a lot of clothes that we're washing because we just got a new washer yesterday. But Ben's going to show, Bella just woke up off of her bed. And then I've got Ellie over there, and then I've got Spry, and then I've got Taylor, and they're all laying there. And you know what they've been doing? Since this morning when I got up, I took them for a walk early because it's so hot out. These days, I can't do anything with them during the day. It's too hot. So what do we do? We go for a walk in the morning. We came back in. My dogs went on place. Uh, Bella went in her kennel. I fed them. And since then, I've let them out once to go to the bathroom, and now they all just lay in their spots. And later tonight, if I get a chance, I'll probably take them out. Last night, here's what I did. It got, the sun got almost down. And so what I did was I went outside with a tennis racket and a tennis ball and a baby in my arm. And mom needed a break to do some stuff here in the house. And so I took the dogs. I went and sat on the tailgate of my pickup truck. And I hit a tennis ball across the yard. And I made them sit and watch. And one at a time, they made the retreat. And each one of them got a chance to do it. Twice, I think. That was what I did with the dogs yesterday. It's 90 degrees with 82% humidity. Can't do anything more. If I had water, I might do a little bit of water work. But I, right now, the mosquitoes are really bad. I was mowing lawns last night because I had a field that I needed to mow for training. So I needed to get that mowed. So I literally worked from the time that our guys went back, the guys here in the shop went home. Then I started doing stuff for getting the dog training ready. But it wasn't doing anything with the dogs. I went out and mowed the lawns. Mowed the fields, mowing the trading areas. So, and I don't feel bad about that at all because I didn't do anything to create an issue with my dog, but I didn't take major steps. Bella in the last week has not hardly trained at all. Uh, we're doing hold conditioning with her. I made a retrieve today. Ben, ben saw it. Uh, we came back from the, from the shop. We walked, I walked down and picked Ben up at the shop. We walked back up to the house. I dropped a dummy at the shop, walked back to the house, I sent her twice. One was an unseen, one she saw. And made, we made two retrieves and she delivered it really nice, didn't she, Ben? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna film a little hold conditioning today video that's part of the Bella Be Good series. It's also part of the hold conditioning series that we're doing, again, on Instagram. But I'm gonna talk about it in there. I'm gonna say, you know what? I've made about two or three retrieves since our last time we filmed. And that was a week, almost a week ago. Because Bella, we would have filmed on f Wednesday. Yeah. It was a week ago. Yeah. One week, I have not done any formal training with her. And I think that some people are thinking that every day you need four 15-minute sessions with 10 reps per session. This isn't like physical training like in a gym where you need to have a structured number of reps, number of sets, upper body, lower body, all your, you don't, it's not that structured. But what it is, is it's consistent. So I don't need to have the structure of today I'm doing 10 minutes of this, 5 minutes of this, 15 minutes of this, broken up by this, this much time in the kennel. After that much time in the kennel, we're going to do this much time tying out. After that much time tying out, we're going to have this much time on place. Absolutely not. A, it's physically impossible for me to do it that way. My schedule has never been the same for the last 10 years. Like every day is not the same. So what I do, though, is I say, I have an opportunity for the next... Ben and I, how long have we been in here working on that North American video, whitetail video? Today. Yeah, you came up here at what time? 10.30? Yeah. It's 1.50 right now. The majority of the time we worked on that, I haven't let the dogs out since you've been up here. Mm -hmm. But so from 10.30, at 10.30, I went down and got you and I brought Bella because I went, I'm walking down to the shop. I worked on heel work all the way down there and she did great. This morning, I took the baby for a walk. So I don't, usually Steph takes the baby for a walk. And when I say a walk, take the baby for a walk, I mean, put the baby in the stroller and went for a walk. Steph usually does that and she takes the dogs with. She posts it on her Instagram story almost every day too. Today she didn't, so I did. And it was just because schedule allowed it to happen. And so I took her and we walked three quarters of a mile down and three quarters of a mile back and the dogs healed. Normally I don't let Bella free run. Today I did. And I recalled her back to me about 10 times during that free run, and she did really well with it. She even got distracted 
uh, with some baby birds that, that I was able to call her off of, which is a huge step for her. So normally I don't, normally we don't do that. And the reason we didn't do that is because I didn't think she was capable of doing it because she didn't, she didn't do it that well. So I went, I got to work on slowly introducing some of these distractions. So I've been working on that with her. I let her get out in range a little bit and I recall her back to me. I let her get out in range, recall her back, out in range, recall her back. So I've been working on that for the last couple of weeks whenever I had the opportunity to do it. But it wasn't like I said, okay, today I need to do this 15 times in a row and then take a break and then do this 10 times in a row. We have, I have to have you guys start understanding that the general drift and in, in direction that you go, you, yes, there's planning and strategy to it, but it's not mapped out. It's not mapped out like a formal directions to assemble a motor. Like you have to take steps in, you know, and I, I use that because uh, my mower broke last night. So taking away this brush mower. So I'm taking it apart and going, okay, if I take it apart, I have to put it back the exact same way or it's not going to work. And so that, yes, needs detail, needs needs 100% procedural steps. This, this is like, this is like artwork. There's a lot of freedom. This is like uh, the, there is no specific one, two, three procedural step to raising these dogs. It's just like raising kids. So the people that have messaged me and said, I don't know how you, I don't know how you expect me to have a normal life. Well, I expect you to have a normal life the same way you do with your kids. Cause I guarantee you, you do not follow the exact same routine every day, always exactly the same. You adjust and you make adjustments as necessary. And quite honestly, I think Bella's going to come off of a week of not doing a damn thing. Probably really strong. I'll find out, but I've known, I know through past experience that when you take a break from something and you don't allow a bunch of now here's where it would have been an issue if between last wednesday and today if i had said i'm not going to work on anything formal with you with delivery or hold conditioning or anything like that we're gonna we're gonna take a break and i'm a i'm a believer in the break but i said steph why don't you just have her do whatever she wants. Why don't you give her some chew toys over the weekend? Why don't you let her th- carry around the shoes and socks? Why don't you throw the tennis balls and not really worry if she brings it back to you? It, why don't you do some of this stuff that I absolutely do not want and I think will create negative behavior and habits? If I said do that on our week off, when we start back up, I expect to be fixing things for the next two to three weeks before we even get back to the idea of where I think we should be today. But I know that didn't happen. Because I didn't allow a lot of progress to take place. I didn't allow things to go backwards either. So I say, yeah, we're still training. It's just we're avoiding doing bad things. And letting the dog kind of take a break mentally and physically. And then you combine that with the conditions of the heat and the, the, the time of day. It's just Steph, Steph texted me when I was up in Michigan. She said, you know, Bella is in heat and so is Ellie. And Ellie's going to be bred this week. So I've got these, you know, this, those are completely different things. We, we can't let the dogs just go uh, wandering around. We don't anyway, but I'm not going to for the risk of, man, the neighborhood dog might come over. A dog from a long ways away could smell them. So, but Steph was out in the yard and she said, you know what? I can't have Ellie and Bella together. They just, they're both in heat and they're doing things that I don't want the kids seeing. So she had to separate them. So what did she do? She put took Bella and she tied her out under a big pine tree in our yard that has constant shade. She worked in the yard and here Bella laid under that pine tree just quiet as could be. She hasn't done that. I don't know that I've tied her out, but maybe once or twice ever because I just, I just it never needed to. But here she did it. So that's new. But you know what? That created, a, that was real positive. Now, if she decided to start chewing on the tree or digging holes in my yard, I'd have said, boy, we created an issue. But Steph would have said, that's not going to work. And Steph would have took her off the lead and put her in her kennel or put her on place. Did something different to control the, control the situation and not allow those. But the root of it was not allow those two to get together. So you have to, I love how tight people follow. I love how committed people are to following the series. I love how committed people are to following and watching the videos. The problem and the downside of it is, and the reason we do so many of them and so many different ones with trying to do so many different dogs is because I want to tell you and I want you to understand, no two are the same. 
So when you ask me, what do I need to do as far as the daily schedule? Paint me off, you know, schedule me out the next 30 days of what I should be expected from me. You wouldn't believe how many people ask for that. You wouldn't believe how many people want me to do that. I absolutely won't and can't because I can't do it for myself. Because I have a general direction and I know that, and, and that's what you should be getting from us. I hope you're getting a lot of different scenarios in, in examples of how to deal with certain situations. But you're, the hard part is, is you're going to have to A, study it, and B, you might not study it that hard because you go, I don't, I don't have to deal with that. Why should I pay attention to that? It doesn't pertain to me. And then in a couple of months, it might. And then you'll, then you'll go, I want you to say, I got to go find that information. I've had some people reach out to me and want me to break down the entire series for them based on their issues. And I go, man, I don't have, I don't have enough time to break it down for myself. It, this requires a little bit of work. And I'm, I'm probably venting a little bit, but I want, and, and so some people are going to listen to this podcast and be offended by it. They'll be, they'll be upset because they're going, he's telling me I'm not working hard enough. You're right, I am. You'll have, to make a, you'll have to make an effort. Some people want it so handed to them. I can't do it that way. No one can. And if we do, you're going, it's not going to work. And the, and the frustration level will be even worse. And I know some people are probably going to say, because I know this will happen. Yeah, some people will think that. But the major, more, more people will respond back to this and say, it's probably the kick in the ass that I needed. You know, I get, it's really easy for me to, you know, open up the laptop in the evening and watch the series. That's good. I'm glad. But that doesn't get your dog trained. And so a couple times I've had people, literally the people that have asked me the question and I've responded back to them and said, look, you do not have what you think you have. You do not, you're not where you think you need to be. You know, a lot of times that happens when it, when the questions come up with, you know, the process, where they're at and how they're doing. And, you know, I'm, I'm past this, I'm on to this, and this is the problem I'm having. How come? And I say, well, you're not past that. You think you are, but you're not. And, and sometimes that's exactly what they need to hear. And they just go, yeah, I guess he's probably right. So my hope is that this podcast is a wake up to everybody. Well, it touches on 4th of July and that kind of stuff. But I, I want the people, I want the, anyone who's thinking, a about the schedule, you know, can I, he needs to give us a better schedule. There is no better schedule. You need to watch more stuff and then you need to work more. And so it's a cruel reality of you don't get any better by what you do. You'll get better. You'll get, you'll get more dangerous by watching more YouTube, but you won't get better at any of it if you don't practice it and make the mistakes because you guys watch some of the mistakes I make. I made mistakes with Cedar already. I think people really like that because they see, they go, man, he, he recognized it. He told us that he missed it. That's what it looked like. And now he's going to try to make a change or an adjustment. I screwed up for one day trying to get her to sit remotely. It was all in my technique. I faced her and I couldn't do that. I had to turn to the side. That was it. But I, the first day, it didn't work very good. It would have been real easy to tell Ben, let's just not share that day. Let's just forget about that one. We'll show the next day when I figured it out. And I'll show him how good of a trainer I am. What does that do for it? You know, what is it? How do you gain from that? I make mistakes. I run into issues. I don't quit on it and throw my hands up and go, oh, I saw a guy on video on YouTube that did that and it worked. Why isn't it working for me? You got to experiment. Now, it's, I'm listening to myself and going, man, I'm telling people not to watch. No, I'm telling you to watch it, but I'm telling you to have the guts to try stuff yourself too. Have the guts to say, it didn't work for me. Maybe there's another video that he did with a different dog. I should watch more of those. Get as much information as you can. Apply it. And then if it doesn't work, apply something else. And if it doesn't work, apply something else. Don't get so frustrated. I've got one here that I'm looking at that literally is going to be its own little project, I think, because this, this lady's having a real hard time. And I think the dog's like 10 weeks old. And, and so it started out with a real positive email and it ended up, the last line says, it's devastating. I, I want to do my best to help avoid devastation for you guys. So, but it's a two-way street. It, it has to be a commitment on your end as well. 
And it has to be the ability for you to be develop some confidence to try stuff and not look for everything to be handed. We can't allow, we can't have you expecting, well, dog bone will fix it. I'll just send them an email. It, you can send me the email and I'm going to do my best to get back with you and help you in any way I can. But it's going to take a commitment from you guys to continue to put out as much effort as we are putting out to give it to you. That way, nobody loses. We're, all, we're both going to gain a whole lot. So that's it, man. We're back on the podcast row. I don't know how many we're into. 80-some. I'm still striving to hit triple 82. digits. we got a ways to go. Uh, but we're going to be back after it. Um, don't know that we'll record one before the 4th. If we don't have a wonderful 4th of July weekend, be safe. Keep your dogs cool. It's going to be awful hot around here. So keep the dogs cool. Keep them up. Um, be conscious of what's around you at all times. Not just for yourself, but for the dogs as well. Um, but enjoy the greatest nation. Our greatest nation here is birthday. Um, you know, and, that, and I know we have some international listeners too. And I think other countries are awesome as well. Um, I'm just damn proud to be an American. Uh, and I think you should be proud of wherever you're from as well. Um, so don't take any offense to that, but uh, red, white, and blue, man, she's gonna be flying, flying strong, right? Mullet man, Ben's, America. Ben's, Ben's digging in, hashtag America, letting the mullet really go. We're fighting with his girlfriend right now about trimming it, but we'll win. We always do. Um, you guys have a great day. Continue to work towards, put the work in. That's all I'm asking. Put the work in. So good luck with your training, as always, and thank you for the support. Mm-hmm.